This is India, with over 1.2 billion people, the second largest population in the world. You step off of the airplane, you step out of the airport, and uh, one of the things that you notice first is the people, just a, a mass, a sea of people here in India. You notice the uh, culture that they live in is so different than the culture that we're used to. India is a land of variety. Wealthy and respected Brahmin, poor and despised untouchables, Western commodities and simple thatched roofs, all these exist together in one diverse society. But despite all these differences, there are some things you will find just about anywhere. You notice their smiles. You notice their servant attitudes. You notice their friendliness. Despite the colorful, vibrant, and seemingly happy culture, it is a culture that lives in bondage to false gods. About 80% of India's population claims to be Hindu. Hinduism, which has over 33 million gods, is a religion full of rituals and false hope. The Indians as a whole are uh, people that really integrate their faith and their uh, daily life they're very intertwined. Uh, in the United States, sometimes we can separate our different parts of our lives. We, we have our church world and we have our business world, but for the Indians, it's all integrated into one. Uh, their success in their work has to do with God's blessing. Uh, their ability to study has everything to do with answer to prayer. The way Indians intertwine their faith and daily life can make it difficult to reach them with the gospel. There is great risk in accepting the Christian faith. Jobs could be lost, businesses devastated, and families torn apart. However, despite the implications of coming to Christ, many have found the hope that is in Jesus Christ through the work of the AFLC in India. Our work in India goes back quite a ways. We, uh, we think about the uh, annual conference resolution in 1978 in which the annual conference said we would like to have a work of world missions in, in India. It took a couple of years before we got started and in 1980 we began with the Bible Faith Lutheran Church here in the land of India. In 1986, the Bible Faith Lutheran Church became independent of the AFLC and we began working with a group of churches that wanted to remain AFLC churches here in India. And since that time, God has blessed us in a number of ways. One of the greatest blessings is Pastor Luther Dossery. He is the president of the AFLC of India. I oversee the work of AFLC. Preaching and teaching, that's the main important. I just go to the congregations and uh, uh, preaching the gospel and uh, uh, teaching there. Um, so the strengthening the congregation, so that is my main responsibility. Pastor Luther also oversees the Children's Home, St. Paul's School, and pastor's training. Through humble leadership, he has become highly esteemed by both pastors and members of the AFLC of India. I praise God for the leadership of Reverend Luther Sastri, President of AFLC. The work is flourishing well under the able guidance of Reverend Luther Sastri. Another blessing has been the number of churches that have been established, bringing life to many different places. By the grace of our Lord, we could establish many congregations in uh, some districts of Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh is located in the southeastern region of India. It boasts an expansive coastland nearly 600 miles and is known as the Rice Bowl of India. With over 84 million people, Andhra Pradesh is the fifth largest state in the country and is divided into 23 districts. <laughs> Thank you.
establishing congregations. Mm, that is the main aim of the church. So we, the AFLC in USA has been supporting pastors, uh, establishing new congregations in uh, different parts of Andhra Pradesh. The work of the AFLC is so uh, congregational. We believe that the uh, highest form of the kingdom of God is the congregational ministry. Uh, we have uh, church planting ministries and the work of reaching unreached people groups. At present, we have 56 churches in uh, four districts of Andhra Pradesh, the Guntur, Prakasam, Krishna, and Chittur. The churches in India are vibrant, the worship times are full of energy, and the prayer times are many. I really love coming to India and worshiping with the people. Even though we don't understand the language, you can feel the spirit of the Lord here and that they have true worship. Uh, one Easter season, it was Lent, and I asked, do you have any prayer requests going on? He said, well, it'd be nice if you'd pray for our prayer meetings. I said, well, what prayer meetings do you have? He said, um, well, we start now at the beginning of the Lenten season and we pray until Easter, and it lasts for a couple hours at night. I said, I think you need to pray for our prayer meetings. There are 56 congregations, but there is a need for more pastors and lay people prepared to lead these congregations. Uh, we have 39 pastors and eight Bible women working among all these uh, churches. The church in India believes in the importance of training and supporting women leaders to minister to the congregations. Many of the Bible women are widows of pastors who have passed away. In the absence of a pastor, Bible women lead the Bible studies and prayer times as well as visit the homes of the congregation members. Bible women role is very important, in uh, particularly in Hindu converted congregations. Indian society is a different one. Um, women can go to any house, but whereas men cannot go. The Bible man goes to the houses and preaches the gospel to the family. So she is welcome there, whereas men is not allowed. So that's why we are using Bible women to preach the gospel. Be it Bible women, pastors, or other leaders, the need for continued biblical and theological training is great in India. At present, we have training program, pastor's training program. It's so important to have a Bible school and a seminary because then we can teach pastors and we can train uh, leaders to reach people in the congregations. We have pastors coming from AFLC USA. Uh, every year they're coming to India and teaching some theological subjects. Along with this partnership, the church in India has partnered with the Ambassador Institute and is using the simple story yes, method of teaching. The Ambassador Institute began in India in 2010. And we have had one graduating class, and we are excited for another graduating class that's in the process. We have some great leaders there in India. We have uh, Pastor Luther, who oversees the work in India as a whole, and uh, underneath him, working specifically with the Ambassador Institute and the oral style of training, is Pastor Devasahayam. Uh, Devasahayam is a, a really a lovely man. He is a man that is, uh, has such a deep love for prayer and a great faith. Pastor David Sahaim is in charge of the regular training gatherings for pastors, Bible women, and other leaders in the church. They come to the ch uh, Chirala every month, once in a month. So during that time, uh, 
we arrange the training classes. And they will uh, really study God's Word together. They'll wrestle through the questions of the Bible as they study that together in an oral style. In the training, they learn 2,200 verses of Scripture. They memorize 2,200 verses of Scripture. 84 stories takes two years. It's a two-year program that we use in this training process. I attend the Bible classes and they have been very useful to me because I have learned many things. I'm also using the simple story method in my congregation. The simple story method is very useful for teaching the Word of God and for the people to learn the Word of God also. This training program is very important. Many students have told me that they are gaining deep knowledge in the Bible through this training program. Not only are leaders in the AFLC being trained through this program, but other Christians are also benefiting from it. We came to know that there are many independent pastors around us that don't have theological training program. So they also want to come to our training program. The first group of 20 students then expanded and we had uh, from one class, we grew into three classes. And so those three classes have been continuing on now in their studies and uh, looking forward to how God is going to continue that multiplication process. I took the training two places. Every month last year, we conducted the training classes in Chittur district. Many students are attending the Bible classes there. We are planning to have branch training centers in many parts of Andhra Pradesh. The three benefits, one is the training of the leaders, the second is the training of the people within the congregations, and the third is outreach to the unchurched communities. Many people are waiting for the Word of God. There are completely Hindu villages all around this area of Chirala that we're working in. And they have never even heard of the name of Jesus. And so, as these men are able to bring the stories of God's Word to these people that have no idea about who Jesus is or, or what He has done. We've had uh, churches spring up in completely Hindu, Hindu villages and the men that are leading those churches are ones that have been trained in the Ambassador Institute and through the oral style of training. This training program is very important in our AFLC to send pastors to many unreached people groups. So I ask you to please pray for this training program in our AFLC. In India, 89% of the people groups are considered unreached, which means that they have no Christian influence. The host of different languages and the caste system are the main factors that make reaching India such an arduous task. We have selected some unreached people groups. We have caste system, different caste, and they live together in one, in one village, separately. Even though people of different castes live in the same village, they don't normally interact with each other, which causes one group to be reached while another remains unreached. This poses a unique challenge because efforts must be made to reach specific caste groups. But the AFLC of India is going out into these communities and bringing the gospel. So we are sending pastors to that unreached people um, preaching gospel and establishing congregations there. By the grace of our Lord, uh, since 2005, we have been doing this ministry. Um, now we are able to establish new, new congregations among unreached people groups. Very recently, 
I came to know about one village where Yadava group is living. In the beginning, they, they did not allow pastor there. However, pastor visited that village many times and started preaching gospel there. God opened door in that village. Now we have a good congregation in that village. Sending out pastors of the same caste group appears to be the most effective way of reaching the Indian people. Uh, the same caste pastor going to that uh, same caste group. So that it makes it easy for him to uh, talk to them and have fellowship with them. However, it is also necessary for pastors to reach across different caste groups for the gospel to reach all. Reaching from one caste to another caste uh, is a process uh, jump, really. And so we were able to use the oral style of teaching a non-threatening approach of storytelling and questions and answers to communicate God's word to people that had never heard about Jesus before. Continue to pray that the barriers of the caste system be broken down so that all may have an opportunity to hear the gospel. There are many people who don't know who God is. So I ask you, please pray for the village people. There is no gospel in the villages, so I request all of you to please pray for us. We also have a medical clinic where the doctor goes out oftentimes reaching out into the, uh, into the villages, maybe to places where we don't have a, uh, have a church. He goes out and fulfills their needs physically and then oftentimes takes a, a pastor with him and then the pastor has the door opened for him to start a new church. Dr. Razu has been going around the congregations and establishing um, free medical camps. It's a mobile clinic. I go to remote villages and conduct free medical camps there. I examine the patients there and give free medicines to the poor people. If they have chronic diseases, I take them to the government hospitals and help them get admitted there. Uh, people come to the uh, medical camp. During that time, we ask them to pray for them. So they, they come and they get prayers and at the same time, they come to know about Jesus Christ. So the free medical camps also helping in unreached groups to know about Jesus Christ. Besides the need for medical help, the need for good schooling is also great. The education is very important, uh, the FLC. Poor Christians, they, they don't get a chance. They don't get to go to a good uh, school. They have only one option, the public schools. In public schools, they don't have any uh, good education, quality education. That's why AFLC of India concentrated on this uh, education program. Ever since it has been established, we are giving education to the quality education to the poor children in Christian society. They are being taught in English medium, meaning that they are learning English and are able to 
study and eventually be able to go on to further schooling and also be able to get better paying jobs because they will know English. My name is Sujata. I am the school um, principal of the school. We are serving the poor children only because all our uh, rickshaw pullers, uh, our uh, machines, uh, children, um, building construction children. So many poor children are there. There are 320 students currently attending St. Paul's School and their ages range from 3 to 15 years old, spanning kindergarten through 10th grade. Children who are very poor families, so they, they are very interesting in the education. At St. Paul's School, the children are taught the languages of Telugu, Hindi, and English. Along with that, they are taught science, math, social studies, and history. I have working in last four years in the school. I have teaching sixth through tenth classes. I have teach the English and science subjects. My name is Yakinya. I am studying tenth class. I enjoy a lot in this school. Uh, teachers are saying very good. Uh, I like so much. Uh, they are saying very uh, clear to me. They are also asking questions. Do you understand? They are asking each person, uh, you are understanding or not. They are asking that question. My name is Rachel. I am studying 8th eighth, eighth class. I, I join in the school 6th six to 8th. Uh, I like teachers and my subject is uh, science. However, the most important education they are receiving here is that of the Word of God. Then they became God children. That is our duty. Uh, that is our intention. In the assembly, we will teach Bible class and prayer. So they have to learn God is good, God is great, Jesus is our Savior. They have to learn. So my parents were also in the God service, God workers. So because uh, I have very satisfaction in the school, I very dedicate and I am working here very happy. Thanks to the dedication of the teachers and staff and support of the AFLC in the United States, these children are receiving a chance at a better future for themselves and their families. conjunction with the school and in response to the poverty, death and neglect so prevalent in this region of India, the AFLC has started a ministry to help the least of these, the children. The one thing that has really touched my heart by coming to India is the children. Some years back, um, one of the families in one of the villages had a young boy who had lost his parents. I think both of his parents had died. And they asked if he could come and stay with Pastor Luther and Vardini and be able to attend St. Paul's um, Christian Academy. And that's how the Horeb Children's Home started. Now there are about uh, oh, 40 kids. Those, those are orphans. They are uh, being fed. In, in our organization at Cherala. These children come from various villages. That's why they stay here. They live here in home, for children home. People in the villages, pastors have asked that they come and stay at the home 
and then they're able to attend St. Paul's um, Christian Academy. We have three categories. Um, first category, we give priority to the to total orphans, those who do not have parents. In the second category, uh, semi-orphan, either father or mother died, so we, we bring them to the home also. And the third one, the parents are living, but they are al almost like orphans. They are very poor. They cannot uh, uh, maintain their children. We provide clothing and education and their needs also, the medical facilities. The one thing that I really enjoy about uh, coming and working with the children is their heart for the Lord. They really you can really see that they love the Lord. I really enjoy sitting with them in the evening when they have their devotion time. They take a chapter from the Bible and they read and they sing and they pray. And you can just really feel their love for the Lord. And also they're being taught servant hearts. Uh, when we're here, they clean our rooms, They help serve us, they help carry our bags, whatever is needed, they just jump right in and help. My time in India is always really special and I just ask that you pray for the people of India, but especially the children. Children are the future of India and of the church in India. Investing in the lives of these children, both physically and spiritually, is fundamental to reaching India for Christ. Years ago, the Lord provided funds for the AFLC of India to purchase some property in Sharala to house the ministries of Pastors Training, Horeb Home, St. Paul's School, and the Medical Clinic and for years these ministries have been housed in temporary buildings. But those buildings were inadequate to say the least. Uh, some of them were open-sided, some of them were uh, thatched roof buildings and for many years it was the dream of the AFLC of India to have a, a building that would house these ministries that would be adequate. In 2012 a legacy was given to the AFLC World Missions that made it possible to build adequate buildings to house these ministries. By the grace of our Lord uh, and uh, through the prayers of World Missions Committee, uh, we, we have new building construction in uh, Chirala. Th this is a multi-purpose building. S classrooms for children and a, a chapel and uh, dormitories for boys and girls in the Horeb home and a house for president. This will serve many purposes, the AFLC purpose. So I praise God for the people who provided sufficient funds graciously. I always thank them and praise God for this provision. We think about some of the goals that we have and. AFLC World Missions and especially for the work of India. Really they're much the same as we have for our fields all around the world. The first goal is that we always want to make sure that we have people in the United States praying for the work on each field. And I would ask you to be a part of that. Would you be willing to pray for the work 
here in India. The second goal is that uh, we would have a desire to reach the unreached people of India. Sending some more pastors to other people groups, those who never heard gospel. That is the main aim of our AFLC. Also, we want to be training uh, leaders, and especially pastors. We want to es establish training centers, mobile centers in different parts of Andhra Pradesh. So that they might be able to reach people for the Lord and also then disciple them and mentor them as they, as they lead and guide their churches. At this time we have really no missionaries in India but only national workers, but on the very uh, near horizon, and maybe even before uh, you see this uh, video, we will be having missionaries here in India. We have a couple of families that are very interested in coming, and our plans are to have missionaries here in, in India in the very near future. The eventual goal is uh, that we would have these ministries to be self-supporting. Where they're able to handle their own finances, their own training, their own planting of churches, their own evangelism, and their own missions, and that they become a mature and healthy church. Not so that we can stop the work in India or on any of our fields, but so that we can continue to work in those fields and countries with new ministries. That is, an, is another very important part of this vision and ministry that we have. We, we request all the uh, believers in, in America to pray for the work and pray for the welfare of the so, AFLC in India. Please pray for the pastors in India as they are reaching out many unreached people groups. And please pray for the children in the home. And also, please kindly pray for pastors training program. Many young people are willing to serve Lord in our area and they need theological training. So kindly pray for the training program. And so we asked the question, would you consider what you might do to help these people in India? Would you be willing to pray on a daily basis for the work here in India, that our workers and, and the ministries that we have would go forth in the power of Jesus. Would you be willing to, to give to the work here in India? Many people never heard gospel. So without Jesus, they are dying. So we need to send workers to the field. And yes, would you maybe even ask Jesus, would you be calling me, Lord, to go and to be a part of the work in India?